Recently, a major volcanic eruption in Ethiopia, more than 4,000 kilometers away from India, ended 10 to 12,000 years of silence and quickly turned into an international aviation concern. On November 23, the Haley Gubi volcano in Ethiopia's FR region erupted, sending a huge plume of ash and sulfur dioxide high into the atmosphere, almost touching the lower stratosphere. Within hours, strong high-altitude winds pushed this ash cloud across the Red Sea, over the Arabian Peninsula, and then directly towards the Indian subcontinent. By the time it entered Indian airspace, the ash was disrupting some of the busiest international flights corridor. Flights passing through the Arabian Sea sector and heading to destinations in the Middle East, Europe and the US had to change routes, divert mid-air or even be cancelled and Mumbai became one of the major cities where the impact was clearly felt, not at ground level but in the skies. Hello, I'm Khatija and you're watching Lokma Times. Today, we look at how a volcanic eruption in East Africa managed to influence air travel, visibility and sky conditions in Mumbai, what the scientific data shows about air quality and what precautions were taken by aviation authorities to keep passengers safe. But before we dive in, do subscribe and press the bell icon for all the latest update. On November 23, 2025, the Haley Gubi volcano in Ethiopia's FR region erupted. This was the volcano's first known eruption in roughly 10,000 to 12,000 years. The eruption began at about 8.30 am UTC and was explosive. Ash and volcanic gases were thrown very high into the atmosphere between 13 and 15 kilometers or roughly 30,000 to 45,000 feet. Important among those gases were sulfur dioxide, commonly called SO2, and the plume contained fine ash, rock fragments and gravel. High altitude winds then carried that plume eastwards at around 100 to 120 kilometers per hour. The ash first crossed the Red Sea and the Arabian Peninsula, moved across the Arabian Sea and kept going toward India. By November 24, the cloud had entered Pakistan airspace and by November 25, it had reached into Gujarat and northwestern Maharashtra, bringing the plume into the higher levels of Mumbai's airspace. The plume mainly stayed at heights of 30,000 to 45,000 feet, while above the surface, air layers were most city pollution states. Because the plume flew so high, the most immediate and visible effect was on aviation. Volcanic ash is hazardous to aircraft. It contains silica and hard particles that can damage engines, and volcanic gases like SO2 are corrosive at high temperatures. As a result, many flights were rerouted or cancelled. In Mumbai's region alone, at least 28 flights that would have flown through the affected Muscat and beyond were diverted to avoid contaminated airspace. Some carriers cancelled key international sectors and specific flights were redirected. For example, an Indigo flight was diverted to Ahmedabad. Airline operators and the Directorate General of Civil Aviation issued advisories and ash notices, and airports were instructed to inspect runways and suspend operations if ash contamination was detected. In short, the aviation sector faced significant disruptions until the plume moved on. On the ground in Mumbai, the story was different. Mumbai was already experiencing very poor air quality due to local factors, low winds, cooler temperatures trapping suspended particulate matter, and carryover pollution after the monsoon. On November 25, the citywide air quality index stood in the severe category. An AQI of 316 with several monitoring stations recording even higher values. Vadala 364, Chembu 338, Kolaba 337, Juhu 332, and Worli 331. Mumbai Airport's AQI was 308. Because the volcanic plume remained at very high altitudes and moved quickly, it did not significantly add to ground level pollution in Mumbai. Meteorological analysis indicated that most of the ash and SO2 remained aloft and dispersed rapidly as it travelled east. That said, there were short localised spikes reported elsewhere where the plume intersected lower atmospheric layers. In Delhi, for example, PM2.5 rose briefly at some stations, a momentary jump from 173 micrograms per cubic metre to 218 micrograms per cubic metre at one site. But these were short-lived. Scientists and meteorologists concluded the volcanic plume was unlikely to produce prolonged citywide deterioration of surface air quality in Mumbai because of its high altitude and fast transit across the region. Visually, the plume changed what people could see in the sky. Many residents 
reported hazy, darker skies and strong twilight colors at sunrise and sunset. This happened because fine ash and aerosols in the upper atmosphere scatter and absorb sunlight differently, producing pronounced sunrises and sunset and a haze sometimes compared to dust storm conditions. Visibility on the ground was reduced in places, though much of that reduction was compounded by Mumbai's existing pollution. On health, the general risk from this event to Mumbai's residents was limited because the ash stayed aloft. However, volcanic ash and sulfur dioxide are known to affect respiratory health when people are exposed to them at significant concentrations. Research shows higher SO2 exposure can increase asthma, medicine use, primary care visit and emergency department visit for respiratory issues. Inhalation of fine ash can irritate the throat and lungs. And long-term exposure to crystalline silica raises silicosis risk, given that Mumbai's residents already face heightened respiratory risk from severe urban pollution, health advisories emphasized caution for vulnerable groups. People with asthma, chronic lungs disease, older adults and young children, even though the eruption itself did not markedly worsen ground-level pollution in the city, there were also modest temperature effects linked to the high-altitude ash. The plume acted a little like an upper-level cloud layer, briefly changing how much sunlight reached the surface and slightly modifying minimum temperatures. These were small and short-term changes, not large-scale climate shifts. Authorities and aviation bodies put several operational measures in place. The DGC issued ASHTAM and SIGMET advisories covering affected airspace up to 50,000 feet. Airlines were told to follow volcanic ash procedures, brief crews, carry extra fuel if required for rerouting and report any suspected ash encounters immediately. Airport teams inspected runways and were on 24-hour alert, monitoring satellite and meteorological data. These protocols helped avoid engine damage and kept passengers safe, though they did cause travel disruption. To sum up, the Haley Gubbi eruption on November 23, 2025 produced a very large high-altitude ash plume that travelled rapidly towards India. It caused major aviation disruption and changed the appearance of the sky over Mumbai but it did not significantly add to ground-level air pollution in the city because the plume remained aloft and dispersed quickly. Mumbai's severe air quality situation on the same days was driven mainly by local pollution and meteorological conditions, not by volcanic emissions reaching the surface. Authorities used established aviation safety procedures and monitoring to manage the immediate risk. In the end, the Ethiopia eruption became a rare reminder that events thousands of kilometers away can still shape the skies above Mumbai. So thanks for watching. Do subscribe to Lokpur Times for all the updates.